Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist From Off The Cuff. Today we're gonna to be talking about pilot's watches and a couple different ranges. We're gonna be covering the 200 and under, the under 500 and over 500. And really there's no reason to, to pay too much more than 500. Um, pilot's watches are, you know, they're a tool watch uh, and they're normally on leather straps. So there's no crazy extending bracelets you have to worry about or um, depth ratings or, or fancy loom. Um, there's really not much to them. They're very simple watches, um, very classically designed. Um, so I think there's a lot of bang per buck you can get out of a pilot's watch. Um, so if you know you just want the, the piece for what it is and you're not chasing down the brand name too much, uh, you can definitely get a lot of watch for your money. So first we're going to talk about the Orient. Uh, here, which is a very nice watch. It, it's actually um, in the Flieger style, which is one of the three main styles we're going to talk about today, um, which is a kind of old school German pilot's watch, very classic. Um, so very quickly, before we get too, into, too much into that, let's just cover these general um, themes here. And then uh, we got the Techna Harrier which is instrument panel based. So it's everything about it is basically meant to look like the instrument uh, gauges that were um, in uh, classic airplanes. And then we have from Yonkers here, um, another aviation inspired watch. And um, it actually has the kind of corrugated sheet metal um, engraved dial there which is a very nice touch so it's not necessarily a traditional pilot's watch it, it almost is kind of a cross between like a classic um, deck watch or marine chronometer style with the with the uh, with the numerals and everything like that but you know it's a, a, an aviation designed watch from a company that, that you know used to make airplanes so um, I, I'm very fond of it and I'm looking forward to covering that today Another thing we'll cover um, very quickly, uh, some of the differences in price range. You can see the different box, Orient box, you know, came in very simple. It's a nice little tag here. <laughs> so it's very simple. We're actually pretty good for a watch under $200. Kind of the surprise of the, uh, of the group is the Tecna box, which is wood. Very cool. And very nice little seal here. Um, it's a nice soft pillow. Everything was packed really nicely. So very nice surprise uh, with the Techna, which is uh, under $500. And then for the Yonkers watch, um, you know, very nice seal and emblem there. Uh, the traditional Yonkers logo from aircraft and then the corrugated sheet metal tie-in which uh, is the look from the actual aircraft that they've kind of worked into the box and into the dial there and I actually kept the um, the bracelet in there the original strap that it came with because it's such a nice strap you know um, as opposed to the Orient which came with pretty much cardboard um, I kept it just because uh, I wanted to make sure that I touched on it during the review that it is actually a very nice soft supple you know it just takes a little breaking in but I mean once it does it has this really cool little flap feature here it adds a little bit of comfort um, so it's it's a really cool very cool piece um, came with it top quality I only really changed it out to add some texture okay so I'm back to business let me get this guy on the wrist here and so we're going to talk first about the you know very entry level we're talking 200 and under which is orient flight really nice cream dial i mean you can get a lot of bang for your buck uh, with orient watches so again it's that german classic german flagger style uh, really finely executed you have the minute track on the outside with the hour track smaller on the inside um, Looks like we picked just the wrong time to look at that because the hour hand is just uh, tucked away behind the uh, minute hand there. But it's basically shorter and it, it lines up 
with the uh, the inner track there. The caliber is an Orient in-house movement, which is nice. Um, so everything's assembled in the same place. It's a uh, caliber 48743. It's non-hacking, non-hand windable, which is kind of to be expected in this price range. It's only a three hertz um, uh, beat count, you know, so it's basically six beats per second. So, um, you know, it's a lower frequency watch and you can see it's just a little bit choppier as it goes through but honestly I feel like on a pilot's watch you know with the very fine second hands um, you can kind of get away with the lower beat counts you know it's it still it looks very smooth clearly mechanical and uh, very elegant so what you'll see here is you know it actually does have loom which is nice um, not necessarily um, a key factor on pilot's watch um, neither is the water rating which is you know 200 or I'm sorry 100 meters which is very nice uh, probably attributed to the screw down crown uh, let's see, try to get some other angles on this you can see it's kind of a mixture of finishes uh, brushed a little bit of polished um, it actually has a solid case back uh, which I'll pull off right now and the uh, the strap is aftermarket it's uh, just a little BNR strap uh, which you can find online. I actually was able to retain the, uh, be able to transfer over the original uh, Orient buckle there, which is signed, which is cool. If I can get it to focus. There we go. So that's a nice little touch. Um, the original one that it came on, the original strap was, you know, um, textbook cheap uh, pretty much I mean, it was soft enough but I mean it just did not look like leather um, but this is just you know a nice little you know a couple bucks and it really kind of takes the watch to another place you know it really adds to the vintage appeal of the design so now we're gonna talk about the Techna Harrier let me get this on first here and the Techna Harrier is comes in at well, you know, a pretty good number uh, underneath 500 bucks. I actually was able to get it on sale, so I got it well under 400. Um, but great watch. Um, the Orient was more classically sized at 42 millimeters. This was a, a 41, so it's a little bit smaller, a little bit sleeker. Um, it really it only feels like a small watch when it's sitting next to other larger watches. Otherwise, it's it's honestly a, a large size I actually have a seven and a quarter inch wrist so I mean it's a little bit above average um, size wrist so and you know the, the watch fits me really nicely so it's um, let's start with the it has a sapphire crystal so you step up in price get a couple more nice uh, rich features in there um, the crown is also screw down and it's actually signed um, it's this cool little diver's helmet, which I think is more of a staple of Techni versus um, something that actually has to do with the theme of this particular watch. Um, also has the signed uh, buckle there. Great profiles. You can see they kind of have those overhanging lugs. Really, really nice, nice dial. I mean, I guess I could describe it as HD. I mean, it is just sharp. I mean, uh, the execution is very, very nice. Everything is really, really sharp, really legible. Um, as you can see on the dial, it actually says Opus Manufactum, which is Latin for handworked. And they're actually referring to the Miyota 9015 movement, which I've been extremely pleased with. Um, which is a, pretty much, you know, um, a modern uh, equivalent to the classic 2824 um, from ETA. Um, it actually has some nice Geneva striping on there and um they do hand work them uh when they when they say that uh, it's because they manually adjust the watch in three positions you know it's a uh, four hertz so it's a, a nice higher uh, beat count uh frequency it's eight beats per second versus six and uh let me show you now the case back which is a very nice display case back and you can actually see this great movement i mean the rotor is nothing fancy but what the rotor does is very cool. Let's see if I can uh, get it, kind of flick it to get the. Uh, there you go. 
to get the rotor going there. I mean, look at that. I mean, that is, uh, I have to say, that looks like some efficient winding there. So, really, really nice. Um, it's a little loud. Um, oops, sorry. Um, but I think you kind of get used to it. I mean, obviously, this movement in a diver's watch isn't going to be as apparent sounding, you know, in this nice little slim profile, you know, um, on the, um, on a pilot's watch, you know, um, it's definitely going to be a lot louder, um, but it's nothing that I notice. It's not like I have my wrist to my, to my ear very often, and honestly, it's kind of a cool sound. Um, some people don't like it. Some people think that it's it's nice. I'm one of the people who kind of fall in the camp that yeah, I think it's kind of a cool sound. Um, it lets me know my watch is uh, is working, and it's it's really uh, it's really efficient. You know, it's it's modern. Um, so Techni is actually a really cool brand in the respect that the watch the designs actually come out of. Um, Switzerland from Vanguard and then basically they kind of outsource everything, but everything is still um, Shipped out from Switzerland. So that's it's pretty interesting It's actually a Swiss based company that you know, it's using Japanese movements and probably you know Chinese manufactured cases, but I mean the execution especially I mean it's something in a Pilot's watch, there's not much to these watches, and I have to tell you, everything that is here is outstanding. I mean, those uh, skeletonized hands, you can see, very nice, very sharp, everything's extremely legible. Um, really great uh, details in the dial. I mean, just really nice watch, really pleased with it. Came with this really great uh, strap from Techni, and um, it's just, I mean, it's a great strap. There's not too much I can say about it. Um, uh, I normally am kind of um, religious when it comes to swapping straps out, but I think this strap just suits the watch so well, and it's just such a high quality strap. It's kind of a shame to, to swap it out. It's uh, only 20 millimeters, so it's a little bit smaller, which I think kind of adds to making the watch appear bigger than it really is. So it's gonna ride comfortably on the wrist, but visually it's gonna look bigger because it has the smaller um, strap, you know, then these lugs kind of um, come down pretty far so it, it you know it, it makes visually it, you can kind of go from the thin you know this tapers plus you have the contrast stitching it just makes visually makes the watch appear a little bit bigger than it is you know um, until you set it next to another watch that's larger then you're like well it's kind of small in comparison right just, but on its own I'll tell you what nice comfortable great bang per buck watch now we're gonna move on to the Yonkers. Uh, let's get a nice close look here. So it has that corrugated sheet metal design. Um, and this is actually the Iron Annie JU-52 watch. The Iron Annie JU-52 is a classic uh, uh, fighter aircraft that um, Yonkers actually produced uh, back in the day. So this is kind of their tribute to that. So although it's not really a um, traditionally themed Pilot's watch, it actually is still very much aviation inspired. I mean, these guys used to make fighter planes. Um, so let me get it on the wrist here. And um, some cool things about this model. Yeah, it's over 500 bucks, you know, but you get what you pay for. I think there's actually a mineral crystal um, option you can get, so you can get it a little bit cheaper, but I have the domed sapphire, which I'll show you in a second. As you can see here, nice dome to it um, sapphire crystal so uh, it's a little bit more expensive um, you know uh, still nowhere near a thousand I mean I think you can get like a chronometer version um, for like a thousand but I mean this was I want to say it was right around uh, five six hundred um, kind of in this trim so it doesn't have a screw down crown um, which is actually normal for pilots watches these two other choices are very unique in that they do have screw down crowns you know this one with the hundred meters water resistance you know this one's more traditional five even though it has a screw down crown you know it's still only um, 50 meters water resistant so is this guy here um, really great dial um, kind of a marine chronometer look 
um, but you know, uh, kind of done to a different scale and execution um, that really, you know, with the uh, nice, you can see there the chapter ring, the nice minute track. Um, it's just a really, I mean, I love this watch. I think it's just uh, very classic and timeless. Um, you'll see this type of design on, on a lot of other watches, you know, similar font, um, white dial, very simplistic uh, case shape, but I just feel like the execution that Yonkers did here was just really, really nice. I mean, you can see it's it has still that very toolish um, look to it. Um, so you know that this watch means business, you know, it's not just some, it's not just a piece of wrist candy, it, it serves a purpose. And um, I, you know, although I did like the, um, the strap that came with it, I put it on this uh, nice Hirsch strap, which is new for 2015. Uh, it actually has some coordinates here, um, I think that uh, lead to Hirsch's home uh, headquarters in Austria. And then this great compass um, detail. It's just, I felt like it really tied in with the watch. I actually had this on alligator for a little while, uh, which was also very nice, but I felt like that it strayed a little bit from the theme too much and made it feel a little bit more like a, uh, more like a marine chronometer. Um, I feel like this strap really spoke to the aviation theme. Um, so I was happy to uh, get it on there. Uh, nice thick soft as well so just a great piece um, all all around so let me show you the nice case back here where you will see the 2826-2 movement nicely decorated and um, the 2826 uh, the 26 versus you know 24 is because it actually has a big date complication which means it uses two date discs that kind of overlap uh, you know one goes from like 1 to 15 and then it switches to another date disc that goes from like 15 to 30 or 16 to 31 something like that it, it, it intersects right about a halfway through I forget exactly which day um, it does that um, but it's a very cool feature you know the, the, the scale of the watch is a little bit larger so Having that bigger date, uh, I think, is just a really nice touch. Um, you know, this watch has absolutely no loom on it, um, but you know, it's—I mean, it's just very classic and clean. And I mean, the way it catches the light with that, uh, with that engraved dial, um, I'm just a big fan of this watch. Um, I really can't say enough nice things about this thing. Um, I gotta say, Yonkers, you did a good job uh, you definitely knocked it out of the park with this model so um, I guess real quickly uh, the the watch also it has uh, blued hands they're not like steel hands that have been blued with heat treatment they're actually like a blue coating which I think actually is nicer for this watch um, because it's more of a uh, just more subdued a little bit you know more subtle um, you know, they do catch the light, but not to where it's going to be distracting. Um, you know, if they're just really metallic-y, um, I find, you know, for a uh, more fashion-oriented or maybe like a Bauhaus design where, you know, you really just have those elements that are just extremely sharp and bold, you know, um, where it's something where it's not a very busy piece, then it's nice to have that stuff that pops. But I mean, this just has so many textures and, you know, and, and and then you have, you know, the dials covered with obviously the numbers and then you got the chaptering with the, with the minute index. I mean, there's a lot going on on this dial. Um, so I feel like them using the, uh, just coating the hands, I think, um, just with a darker blue just helps everything kind of flow together. Nothing really overpowers, you know, no one feature overpowers another. Everything just kind of flows very seamlessly. So all in all, um, got to say that I think that um, you can get a lot of bang for your buck with pilot's watches. You know, you should, everyone should have one in their collection. And um, you know, these are three that are in mind. Um, there's a lot of cool brands out there, you know, uh, German made watches. And then you have, you know, Swiss uh, companies that 
aren't Swiss made, you know, and they, you can save a lot of money. And then you have, you know, an in-house Japanese watch, um, mechanical. So there's definitely a lot of different ranges, a lot of different grades. And, um, you know, there's kind of room for everybody. So if you have not picked up a Pilot's watch for your collection yet, um, you know, they're, you're missing out. So let me know in the comments if there's um, anything you're a big fan of, maybe some uh, aviation inspired Zen watches or, you know, uh, maybe something from Hamilton. Um, they're, they're huge on that. Um, so yeah, if there's, if there's any other brands that you think that are, are kind of a great standout piece for the segment, um, as far as the different price ranges go, feel free to share. Thanks guys. Make sure to uh, like the video if you enjoyed it or um, and make sure to subscribe to the channel um, if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.